In this video, I'll show you how to use an Arduino as a low frequency oscillator or LFO. Okay, so in the link down below, you'll find the reference to GitHub. And so if you go there, then you can easily download the code. Just go and click down here, download zip. Once it's downloaded, you open it up and you'll have to unzip it. So let's go ahead and do that. And it'll unzip in the LFO-main folder. So you have to briefly rename that. Similar to my ADSR, you just have to rename it to just LFO. And we'll copy this over, go to Documents. And if you've installed your Arduino IDE, you'll have an Arduino folder. In that Arduino folder, you'll find a Libraries folder. And that's where the LFO needs to be placed. Okay, so now we have the LFO library up and, and ready to go. But how do we use it? So I added an example as well. So you should briefly open that LFO folder, uh, then you'll find another folder, examples. And we're going to copy this LFO example over here. You then go to the main uh, folder of Arduino. And that's where we're gonna copy paste this. All right, there's already one there, but it doesn't really matter, just throw it in. Okay, so then I can open up LFO example and it'll open that of course in the uh, Arduino editor. Okay, so let's have a look through the code. Now, the first thing we do is that we load the LFO.h. This way we have access to the LFO library. Second is we're using here an Arduino Duet with the 12 bit DAC. So we need a 4096 uh, DAC size. That's just defined over here. The, in this demo, the only thing we're going to really vary is the waveform. So that's why there's a variable here, LFO waveform set to one so that it starts with the saw wave when the device boots up. And then every three seconds, we're going to change that waveform. Now there's some internal variables. The first one is going to be our current timestamp. So the Arduino takes periodically a timestamp and based on that generates the waveform. So the next two parameters, TLFO param delta and TLFO param zero are needed to periodically change the waveform. The TLFO param delta is basically the time in between waveform changes. And that one is set right now to three seconds. The next one, the param zero, is the last timestamp where a waveform change took place. Here uh, with LFO, LFO class deck size, we define our LFO class. I called it here LFO class, but you can call it anything else. In the setup, we first set the analog bright resolution to 12 to make sure that we have 12 bits on our deck. Then we'll write uh, some basic parameters to the LFO class. We set the waveform, we set the amplitude, the amplitude offset, the mode, and then the frequency we operate on. We'll look into these more in detail when we later on look into the actual class and the definitions there for manipulation of the LFO. The actual code, the actual loop is very, very short. We take the current timestamp with T is micros, we then generate the LFO form based on that timestamp with this get wave function and then write this to the DAC zero straight away in an analog write. Then periodically we need to change and update the waveform. So here we test whether three seconds have passed. And if they did, we can up the waveform one and take a new timestamp so that the next three seconds will pass and we'll know when to change it again. Now, the one thing that might be a little tricky to understand is the section over here where we take a timestamp and then generate the LFO waveform. How that really works is shown over here. Micros is a function that um, when the program starts, starts at zero and then counts the number of microseconds that have passed since the Arduino booted. So here, we have an example for 66.6666 hertz, right? That's a period of 15,000 microseconds. And so we read out the current timestamp, divide it by the period, and then we get a phase going from zero up. So 
based on that phase, we generate the waveform. Now, the one thing to realize is that the micro's function is limited to 4 billion microseconds, and that translates to 71 minutes. I haven't dug into um, a kind of a reset function that after 4 billion microseconds, you basically go back to zero, but that should be pretty straightforward to put into. My songs generally are not 71 minutes, so I'm never really bothered by this. Okay, so let's run this code. Now, let's just go here. Uh, we just press upload and it will upload straight away. Of course, you need to make sure that the right board is set. I'm using a set, the Arduino do it, and the right comport. It's done uploading. And if we look now at the scope, we see a uh, triangle and a saw wave. Here, a sign, a square. And finally, DC. So those are the waveforms that we have today. OK, as I already mentioned, there's a lot more functions that you can call, a lot more parameters you can twist and tune in these LFOs. So let's dive into the LFO.h uh, file and review these different functions. For editing classes, I always use Atom uh, as editor, but feel free to pick any editor you're comfortable with. Here I look at the LFO.h. Uh, the actual code uh, is in the LFO.cpp, but we don't really need to go in there. Uh, this should be sufficient. Now, um, here the class is defined, and there's a set of public functions that we can now call to manipulate the, uh, the waveform, the LFO. There's first, of course, the constructor, and the constructor takes, as already described in the um, example file, it takes the DAC size as input. So you'll need to pass that when you create your class. And then here's a set of functions that we're now going to discuss. We'll start with the set amplitude function. That's pretty obvious, of course, with the set amplitude, we're setting uh, the amplitude uh, at that point in time when it's called. I use here LFO underscore class, as this was the name I gave the uh, class in the uh, example, but you could change the name. Um, and you could run then LFO underscore class and then dot set amplitude. And if you, for instance, set it to 2048, you'll see that the amplitude is halved. Similarly, you can set the offset with the set amplitude offset command. Here in this example, the amplitude offset is first zero, and then we turn change it to a maximum of 4095. And you see that the waveform then shoots up from the minimum to the maximum. So the one thing to consider uh, with DAX is that they have a minimum and a maximum voltage that they can generate. On the scope here, I show this minimum mac maximum voltage with the white dotted lines. And if I now increase the amplitude, we need to prioritize either the offset or the amplitude. See, if I now increase it, at this point, the, the amplitude of the signal hits the bottom of the DAC. And so if I now further increase the amplitude, then either I am changing the offset or I cannot change the uh, amplitude any further. So I chose here that the, the amplitude is more important than the offset. So if I now increase the amplitude further, you'll really just go all the way to a fully excitation of the amplitude. Of course, if you now reduce it again, it, it'll go straight back to the offset it came from. So just something to note, if you now set the amplitude to maximum, the offset will have no impact at that point in time on the signal. Okay, so much for the amplitudes. Now, in the example, we already changed the waveform using this set waveform command. Uh, we saw already the waveforms there. So zero means the DC value. Then one is saw, two triangle, three sine, and four square. The next section is all got to do with uh, frequency and synchronization. First of all, there's a mode is frequency synchronization mode. So this frequency sync is either mode zero or mode one. It's Boolean, so those are the only two values. If it's zero, then that's basically a free running LFO. 
and you can set the frequency with the set mode zero frequency command. There's actually two of them. One just gives the new frequency. One gives the new frequency, but also gives an extra parameter that is the current time, which is an unsigned long uh, L, L for local variable T. Now, why is there two of these? Well, the reason for that, I of course started just with uh, the command, the first one, where we just set the new frequency. But I noticed that when you didn't change the frequency, you get glitches. Um, and the reason for that is we are using this micros function to generate the LFO. And that means that if you at a random point in time change the frequency, then you will probably not have selected this frequency change at exactly phase zero, because then you can, of course, change the frequency uh, without any glitching. But here in this example, if you go from a uh, slower frequency to a little faster frequency and uh, click here at this point in time, uh, the LFO class set mode zero frequency 30 hertz, for instance, we come from 20, we go to 30 hertz, uh, then we will get this phase jump uh, because as said, at this point in time, the phase of the second frequency that we're setting now is not matching the phase that we currently have at the frequency we're running at. So to solve this, I introduced this second function, set mode zero frequency with uh, the current time because if I know what the current time is then we can correct for this phase offset so that looks then like this this is how we call the function so we set set mode zero frequency to now not only the 30 hertz where we want to go but we also add the current time which is nothing more than the micros command and when this function is then called it computes not only the phase of the current frequency, but then also matches that phase on the new frequency and then patches the two together so that you can really change frequencies without any phase jump. You should really try this out. It feels a lot more natural and you can really do frequency sweeps with this without any disturbances. Yeah, so let's get over to mode one. Now, the reason for creating mode one was that, um, of course, with a free running LFO, you can in principle do everything. You just set the right period and go for it. But um, every time computing what the right period uh, is for this uh, LFO is just a little cumbersome. Let's say you have a track running at 120 BPM and you want uh, your LFO to match that uh, at, a quarter, at quarter notes, for instance. So you could take your calculator, compute that it's 500,000 microseconds that you should put in into the LFO and you're good to go. But it might just be more convenient to just tell the computer, hey, I'm running at 120 BPM. You go figure and make sure the LFO synced. And so that is why we have this mode one in here. Um, so it's nothing more than just simple arithmetic, that's all. And uh, so you can now set the BPM but then you can also set a rate because you might not want to sync on quarter notes. Maybe you want to use 16th notes. So the reference is quarter notes. So if you want to go to 16th, that's a factor four quicker. So you can then run the LFO class set mode one rate. And if you put this to four, then you'll have 16th notes at a BPM of 120, which is a period of 125,000 microseconds. Uh, so this is nothing different than running mode zero and sending it manually to 125,000. But this particular mode now lets you very, very quickly uh, between, for instance, uh, 16th notes and quarter notes or even thirds if you want. Now, I do this a lot in uh, the LFO plus ADSR demonstration video. That's also in the link down below if you want to just get an idea what you can do with this. Just skip to the end section where I just have a, a small little demo track with that. Okay, so those are the two modes in essence. Uh, mode zero, a free running oscillator, and then mode one, uh, one that's mapped to a certain BPM scheme. The one thing left is synchronization because you might now run your DAW and whenever you hit that start button, you want your LFO to synchronize to the DAW. And you can do that by running the sync command and also that you pass the current time. 
And that pretty much looks like this. Whenever the LFO class sync is called sync with microseconds, that is the current time, then wherever it is within the phase, it will just stop what it's doing, go to phase zero. And so you can run that periodically and synchronize your LFO to any external track. And of course you could not only synchronize from the DAW, but also from external analog inputs. Those are pretty much the functions to um, manipulate the LFO with. Uh, then you'll find here a set of just inquiry functions, get waveform, get amplitude, get amplitude offset. Those are the ones that I needed so far. Uh, the reason I have that is that I made all the variables private. Um, making them private is just, uh, I think, good practice because whenever you set parameters, you can check and make sure that someone's not, for instance, setting a parameter of the amplitude above the uh, maximum deck size or um, a negative waveform that doesn't exist or something like that. Um, but if you prefer to make them public, just move them up. Okay, that's pretty much it. Have fun with this LFO. Leave comments down below. Likes are really appreciated and I'll see you in the next video.